Okay, we are on to part two. If you haven't watched part one of this um, lecture, you should watch part one first. Um, so here we're going to talk about lenses. So there are two types of lenses, broadly speaking, and they're essentially shaped like in those two shapes. So this is might be made of glass or some other um, transparent material, and it has its bend on both sides, right? So a just a rectangle wouldn't be much of a lens. Now, realistically, you can have other lenses that don't look like this. You might have lenses that look like this. Right, but this is the glass. Or you might have lenses um, that that maybe they, I mean, they're sort of flat on one side and then curved on the other, right? Those are all different options. But they all ultimately have the same effect as one of those two, right? Now, if you are a lens maker, right, you make those glass lenses and you're uh, polishing them and getting them the right shape, you have a lot to worry about, for sure, right? And we can't deal with that in a lot of detail um, in this course. We're just going to talk about the basics. What do lenses do? Um, how do they, how are they used? But we're going to come to that later. So we've got this type of lens here, and it tends to be useful to just draw a of line along the middle, we call this a center line, like this. Again, I'm just being, I'm just eyeballing it right now. Now, what will a light ray do that hits this lens? For simplicity, suppose the light rays they come in parallel again, right? Like we did for the mirrors. So one one light ray that goes through the middle is going to do just that. It comes in, just goes straight through, hits it here at 90 degrees, leaves it at 90 degrees. Now. If a light ray hits the the lens maybe up here, coming in like this, right here it's going to hit the lens at an angle. So here I can I can draw the normal sort of like this. So this is the normal to the surface. Very faint, but you can see it. Um, the light bends towards normal. This is my angle of incidence. My angle of refraction is going to be smaller. It might look, look something like this. Right, angle of incidence, angle of refraction. Like it bends, it bends down. Then it's going to hit um, the, the the surface a second time. Now here the, the norm, normal looks like this, right? It's a different angle to the normal that we had here. If you were the same angle, if it, those two sides were parallel, it would come out in the same direction as it came in, a little bit shifted downwards. But because those two sides they're different, they have different orientations, it's going to bend differently. Now the angle of incidence is this, and that angle gets bigger, so it's going to bend down some more. It might look something like, I'm going to eyeball it again, of course. It might look something like this. But this is the angle um, of refraction as it comes out of the glass, because the glass has a higher index of refraction on the outside. Right? If you had some, like a lens made of air inside a water tank or something, I mean, it'd be a different story. It'd be an interesting little fun thing to think about. But we're going to assume that the lens is made of something that has a higher index of refraction than the surrounding. We do the same thing um, somewhere else, say down here. And in that case, we're going to get, we're going to use a different color just because we get the sort of opposite effect. I mean, it's the same effect, but in the opposite direction. It bends sort of inwards each time. And you do that to all sorts of rays that come in, and they all meet in a point. Not perfectly true. If you get too close to the edge, like up here, you know, it's not quite going to work out with the realistic lens. Um, but we're going to make the approximation in everything that follows. That our lenses are sufficiently thin um, and or large so that the that all the rays, the relevant rays, all meet in a point here. That's of course the focal point of the lens. So parallel rays meet at a focal point. Now we could have shot parallel rays at the other direction from this side, and then we get another focal point on the other side. So another second focal point. Like unlike a mirror that only has one, lenses have two, and this would be somewhere here, right? But this is the one where we can see light rays come in parallel. They meet here. I don't know what those splotches are, right? Ignore them. Focal point right there. All right. 
And as I said, realistically, a light ray up here might miss the focal point slightly, and actually it also depends on different colors and so on, but we'll, we won't talk about that. We're just going to assume all the, um, all the light rays meet in a single point, um, like that. And the other type of lens does the opposite thing. We should call this something. This is called a convex lens because it's you know, the same shape as the convex mirror, like the back of the spoon and the back of the spoon, just on both sides. This is convex, um, or it's also called converging, a converging lens, because the light rays converge in a point, like parallel rays come in to converge in a point. If light rays come in at some different angle, they will still, like if it came in like this, sort of slightly upwards, it would sort of bend downwards, it just wouldn't be going through this point. All right, what about this lens here? This is this is called a diverging Or concave lens, much like the sort of shape of the the inside of the the spoon, right? So much like the mirror, um, although ironically, concave mirrors act more like um, convex lenses and vice versa. But you'll you'll figure it out for yourself. So first thing we do is we draw a straight line. Uh, now, again, a light ray that comes in along that line here, I'm just going to draw it like this, it's just going to go straight through. Not very interesting, because it hits it here at 90 degrees, here at 90 degrees, just as before. So what happens if a light ray comes in parallel, say, up here? Well, let's do refraction. We understand refraction. I can draw the normal here. Right, this is my normal. And because the index of refraction is greater for the, the lens than the outside, it's going to bend towards the normal. So the angle becomes, becomes smaller, which means it has to um, bend up. Now it hits the other side of the lens, and here the normal is essentially like this. And now it bends away from the normal, because it goes from a high um, index of refraction to a lower index of refraction, it's going to bend away further, it means it bends further up. As it bends twice, and bends twice up. Meanwhile, a light ray down here is going to um, do something like this. It goes here, it bends, just in the, everything in the opposite direction. So there's nothing is focused. I mean, it's diverging. But if you if you on this side and you look at all the light rays, what you will notice um, is that they all appear to come from a point that's back there, like from a single point back there. This should be, and this is not a right angle. We're just arrows, right? I'm off the the middle ray. So the focus, it still has two focal points, one here and one on the other side that you get if you shoot light this way, but the light never actually goes there, but it appears, it diverges, and it appears to come from this, this one single point. It's still called the focal point. And it's a bit like the back of the spoon mirror, the convex mirror, where light never went to the focal point, but the reflected rays all appear to come from the single point. Same thing here. Right, there's a focal point here, and of course another one on the same distance um, to the other side. Okay. So those are two types of lenses. Anything else is just a variation on, on this theme. I mean, you could have lenses that are like half this and top, and then this one on the bottom, but then you just have you know one of those on top of one of those. It's still just a variation on the same idea. All right. Another thing to note is that the um, any ray that's going to go through the center just ends up going the same direction. I mean, should I draw this just in addition? I'm going to draw it up here. So imagine there's a ray that sort of 
comes in uh, not parallel we'll look at that like this this one comes in and this happens to pass through the center right the center of the lens right here then it will end up going in the same direction that it went in before it hit the lens just a little bit shifted down because if you do the um, if you look at the curvature you do the refraction those two they're actually um, parallel to each other like this part here is parallel to this part here by the by the symmetry of it because this one goes right to the middle so the same distance to the left as to the right and assuming the lens is of course um, parallel so that's going to be helpful too let's write down rules for for image um, formation here and there are three rules that we need well we only need two at any one point but the three rules rules to have handy so so one and that applies to to both to both types of lenses and we'll apply it in a second one parallel rays become focal rays sounds familiar right parallel rays becomes focal ray two focal rays become parallel rays so just imagine i'm tracing one of those backwards i have a light here and i shoot it through the focal point while it's going to come out parallel the other side and then the third one is the purple one the purple ray that i drew here um, the ray ray through the center of the lens is straight now of course to find an image we only ever need two lines right because we need two lines to figure out where do they cross that's the image but we have an option um, you've got three options so you pick any two whichever ones are easiest this one tends to be very easy most of the time because it's just a single straight line um, so we're going to apply those again there's no point in me talking about it more we're going to apply them so you see how they look in action and there's a bit of a subtlety based on which focus point do i use i should have written, spelled this out here in some more detail but i think it's easier to just see that um, it always makes sense based on what we know about parallel rays. Okay, let's do it. So here's a, well, here's a convex lens, right? Let's apply the basic idea. Now we're going to treat lenses as lines. So this line is the lens, right? We call this the, the thin lens approximation. And so we're going to pretend we're going to pretend that there's not there's not two different corners here here and here it's just one right so you pretend this, this lens is really thin so for all practical purpose light comes in light comes out so let's draw this again um parallel rays like like this right they end up going to the focal point like this should draw the two foci, foc that's one focus, the other one's the same distance on the other side. Whereas a ray on this side that that went through the through the focus, doesn't matter right now where it comes from, that becomes parallel um, like this. And then there's always the, the ray that goes straight through the middle, no matter what angle it's coming from, um, it goes just straight through. So those are the rules in action. Right. So we're going to use this thin lens approximation. So we really just, we don't care about the drawing of the lens at all. This is just there kind of for, for decoration, right? It tells us, hey, look, this is a convex lens. Really what I care about is this line that marks where the lens is. Okay, so image formation, let's do it. Let's do our pin. Here's our pin. I'm going to draw the incoming rays in blue and the outgoing ones in green. So which one shall I use? Well, I've got three rules to choose from. I'm going to draw them all because it's, you know, it's to show you, I guess. Um, but you only need two to actually find the image. So I'm going to use the straight through ray because this is easy. Now, this is silly to draw in, in two colors, actually, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right, it's here, and then it, it goes straight through like this. I'm not sure what to call this. I tend to call it either the easy ray because it's easy um, or the straight through ray because it's straight through. 
There might be a technical term for it. I don't know. Um, all right, let's draw next rate. So let's go with the parallel ray becomes the focal ray. So parallel ray means parallel to the central axis, right? So this would be, um, be this one here. Now this hits the lens right at the top, but remember I don't actually care where the lens is drawn. I could have drawn it very small, very large, it doesn't matter. Right? If this were actually the lens, this as, as shown, that would be the actual lens, this one would probably be so far up it would actually miss the focus a little bit. But we're going to make the thin lens approximation where everything works out perfectly. So we go from here, comes a focal ray, like this. You can already see I should be extending this um, a little bit further. There we go. So I anticipate this is my image right there, the pinhead. But let's check with the last one. Does it actually work out? Now if I eyeball the distances of the foci, so if I'm a bit off, then my drawing is going to be a little bit off too. But that's okay. Let's see what happens. I think it'll be fairly okay. Focal ray becomes parallel ray. So here we go. It becomes a parallel ray. I think you have to bend down slightly. You could cheat a little bit. Right? But they all should meet right in one point. This is by the head of my pin. So, again, if you do it with another part of the pin, you're going to end up with this image. So the image is it's upside down. It's also real because the um, light actually goes there. It actually means at a point. It's upside down. Now, how big is it? In this case, it looks fairly comparable in size, but... As you'll find out, um, as you do practice problems on this, that it varies a lot. Like if the pin is really close to the to the focal point here, um, maybe you can just visualize this. I move it really close. That means this line here is going to be really steep down. It's going to make a really big image over here. As if this is really far away, then it's going to make a smaller image. So the size depends on how far is this um, from the like from the lens. And I can leave it for you as a little, little puzzle to figure out well, what distance does the object have to be compared to the focal distance, right, focal length, so this distance here, that's the focal length. How far away does this one have to be so that the image is the same is the same size as the, the original object? A little puzzle for you. Okay, this was one option. Now, another version of this is... Um, Actually, another version of this that I have not pre-drawn, but I want to leave as a puzzle for you as well, is what happens when the, the pin is inside the focal length. So it's here. Let's say, what happens then? Now, it's a little bit harder if you're thinking about carefully what are the rays that you should use. And if you're lost, always remember how is the focal point defined in terms of parallel right light rays? What do those look like? That'll give you the necessary hints. If you're still confused, look back at the two cases of the concave mirror. Remember with the concave mirror, we had the, the case where the object was further than the focal length and the case where it was closer than the focal length, and they were radically different. One had an upright virtual image, one an upside down real image. Sort of the same here. So you figure out where's the image formed um, when the pin is right there. Let's look at the concave lens. The concave lens is right here. I should be drawing its um, its focal focal length, its, its um, foci. All right. So foci, of course, plural of focus, right from Latin. Um, if you studied Latin, like the first thing you learn is the plural of us, at least most uses is I, except it's pronounced differently, but this is not a Latin class. Um, so what happens here? Well, I showed you that it that the light, um, what happens to parallel rays in the big picture, right, in this one, this one here. So let's draw this on this little one, where a parallel ray comes in. Right, the thin lens approximation says I don't care about the actual lens that I've drawn, I just care about the I only care about the middle line. That one bounces back as if it had come from the focus on this side. Oops, there you go. Right. 
Um, another one is if I if a line here goes to the focus point, I forgot to change my colors, but it doesn't matter, you know what I'm doing. I promise to be good in a second. Focal line goes to what have I done? Um, I am confusing myself right now. Yes, okay, what have I done? I've made a mistake that I've been trying to tell you to avoid. I was going to tell you to avoid. Well, here I made it. So this ray here on the other side, right, uses the focus on this side. So if I want to draw a focal ray on this side, I have to use the focus on the other side. So this was no. Don't ever do this, right? I got it wrong. No, what I should be drawing is this. I should be drawing a line that goes through this focus, but on this side. So I might draw it like this. But this is the line that I'm not going to draw, but I'm going to draw this part of it. This is my focal ray. Right? This is my parallel that becomes focal, but it uses the opposite side of focus. And that's different from the convex lens. That's how the two are different. This one is a focal ray, but it uses the focus on the other side. Right? That actually gets there. That's why I have the dashed lines here, because when it hits the lens, it starts going parallel, like this. Right? So don't use the wrong focus like I did here. Um, the last thing which will be useful is the same thing we had before, of course, that a line that goes straight through. It's just going to go straight through, no matter the angle. So let's use those to find the, the image um, of a due to a concave, due to a concave lens. So I imagine maybe my pin is here, though in the case of a concave lens, it won't make any difference. Um, like it won't make any difference whether you're inside or outside the focal range. It's not obvious. I mean, you might want to check that, but, but there's no sort of sudden jump from one type of in image to another type of image. Okay, let's draw it. So we've got three rays to draw. We've got the the easy ray through the middle. Um, let's draw this first. Right there. And then it's going to become an outgoing ray. So incoming ray, blue, outgoing ray, green. Right, and like this. All right. Next, let's draw a parallel ray. A parallel ray goes here. Right, it's parallel. Now it becomes a focal ray, but it uses it's a focal ray on the side, but uses the focus point over here. Like this. That's sort of what I had in the previous picture. The last one I'm gonna use is the, the focal ray. Focal ray is the, the one on this side, the focal ray on this side uses the focus over there. So let me draw this. So I'm going to point my, my line straight at the focus on the other side, but oops, I hit the lens. So this part here doesn't actually happen. Right? And instead it becomes parallel. Oops, I again forgot to switch my colors around. I try to be all good about color coding. Actually, I'm not that good at it. Um, So this is where it goes. This one should be green too. Green being here the outgoing ray. So. All right, so where do those rays meet? Well, if you're confused about that, always ask. I've got the outgoing rays. Those are the rays my eye sees. Where do they appear to be coming from? Well, those two, I already see where those meet. They meet right here. And indeed, if I take the one that's parallel and I stretch it back a bit, right, they all meet in this point here, so my image is going to be right there. Now, is the image real or virtual? Well, it's virtual because those rays, they never actually get there, right? The one through the middle actually seems to be going through it, 
but that's the incoming ray that just happens to be in a straight line of the outgoing ray. Right, that's not like light doesn't get focused there in any way. Like those rays definitely never were there. Um, so it's virtual. And as you can see, it's upright. The same side, the pin head in the same side of the center line. Um, it's right here. So these are the basics, right? And much like I said for the mirrors, you have to sit down and do it yourself. You have to draw every single one of those diagrams at least once yourself to make sure you can do it. Like this one here, you're going to get confused. Like I got confused up here, right? If you don't do it at least once. You're going to sit in the exam and they'll give you a simple lens and ask you to draw the diagram and you will not know what rays to draw. Do it once, right? Start with the picture without any rays on. Draw it. Construct where the image is. You know the answer. You can check. And the book actually has beautiful pictures with a lot more rays and so on. Um, let me let me say a few a few things, um, a few notes. Notes. So from the thin lens approximation. One thing is, it doesn't matter. Whether or not the rays used for the construction. of the image whether or not they actually go through the lens let me give you an example let's go back to this one here imagine I drawn this lens shorter imagine I finished it there Right, then this ray here would never fit the lens. And physically, if it was a real physical lens, it might just be that small. That ray, the object might be way higher than the lens is big, right? The, the, the height of this object might be way bigger than the radius of this lens. So this ray is parallel ray. It, it misses the lens. That's okay, right? We can still use it with this line in our thin lens approximation. We can still use it to figure out where the image is formed, even if that particular ray doesn't actually exist. Because there are lots of other rays that do go through the lens. And those ones that we've used, and remember you only need any two of them, but those ones that we use, they only tell us where this is. All other rays that hit the lens will appear to come from the same point. So you don't need the critical, this, um, this parallel ray actually to exist actually to go to the lens i can still use it for the construction you know more often than not we look at an object that's bigger than the lens you look at a distant star through your telescope the star will not fit through the lens but it doesn't matter in terms of constructing where the image is formed all right so so that was the the first point um the the next point, I guess, to, to make here is um, the thin lens approximation is just that an approximation. Right. So there'll be imperfections um, in, in real life. And finally, and that kind of brings us to our next topic, which I'm not going to talk about in this video, obviously. Um, that is, what if you've got more than one lens in, a com in combination, or lenses and mirrors in some kind of combination? So if you have multiple, just two, more than one, lenses or mirrors, Construct the image due to the first mirror or lens, whatever it is. Then this image, wherever it is, it might be way behind the original object, it might be on the other side of the second lens, or wherever it is, doesn't matter. Then this image acts 
as the object for the second lens or mirror. I mean, with, with mirrors, it's sort of straightforward, the reflection of the reflection, right? I'm um, just hold a mirror in front of you, one behind you, um, and that'll, and you'll see the image of the image. With lenses, it's not so obvious necessarily that that should also be the case, but it is the case, right? It doesn't matter if the first image ever actually like, gets formed. It might be a real image, but the rays might never get there because they hit another lens on the way. Still, we construct where the image is and then figure out where is the image of the image. Like the first image becomes the object for the second lens, um, and so on if I've got more than just two, two objects. Of course, this will bring us to optical instruments. Um, such as, I mean, I guess you could say magnifying glass. A magnifying glass is just a convex lens though and you can think about how does it magnify um, and that's related to the the one thing I did I told you to do yourself to figure out um, what happens if you've got an object very close to a convex lens right so do that and then you put a magnifying glass when I say optical instruments I mean the more complicated ones such as telescopes it uses more than one lens in combination for great effect microscopes they both magnify, but very different objects. Telescopes magnify things really far away. Microscopes magnify very close, but very tiny things. Um, cameras. Uh, and so on and so forth. Right. So this is where it gets interesting. All right. Before you do anything else, make sure you can do all the constructions that I went through in this video and did part one, including the one I didn't go through, the one where we have an object in front of a convex lens and the object is closer to the lens than the focus. It's inside the focal range. See what you get. You need to be able to do all of those like in your sleep so that then you can start thinking about those more complicated setups where stuff gets fun. Alright, thanks for watching.